Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video of Green Square Talks BattleBots. Co-hosting once again, we have Civilian Arc and Porinog. How are you both doing today? <laughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, you know, just relaxing. My dog is bugging me right now, which is cute, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, how are you doing, Civilian Arc? IBC root beer. Uh, yeah. Dr. Pepper. But yeah, I'm taking a break from classwork right now to do this because this stuff is a lot more fun than classwork. More, so. important. more yep. important in school. More important too. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing my jackpot shirt this time. Civilian Arc has his Sawblaze shirt on and as he's showing you in the camera. Porinog obviously has a Nightmare yeah. shirt on too, who, who I'm hoping we'll see in a future season and, and stuff with so. Battle Bots and but yeah, in this episode, what we'll be doing is we'll be discussing every fight that we saw in the most recent episode of BattleBots, along with Pori and I making fun of Civilian Arc because something <laughs> might have something big might have happened in that in that episode. Y'all, y'all just wait until Ribbon and Black Dragon lose next episode, and then we'll see who's having fun next week. Bro, we're both <laughs> winning next episode. Black Dragon's winning the whole thing, so you can't touch me. <laughs> You but yeah. have to get through Ribbon for that. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> basically we'll make we're making fun of civilian arc while risking that if one of Black Dragon or Ribbon loses in the next Ribot. two episodes, which we know that one of them will, because only one bot can take home the giant nut, civilian arc could come at us with a little revenge in this podcast. Good. So, Good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, so. On to the first fight before we really start, really get the fun going, where the episode led off with Lockjaw and Shatter, or Shatter coming in as the underdog here, at least if you count between higher seeds and lower seeds and stuff. Shatter came in with their vertical spinner configuration for the first time, where they got the shiny armor that that's fun to see and awesome in terms of design stuff, along with two forks on the front with low ground game here. They got Lockjaw for their opponent, who added a ton of top armor or for this one for that hammer and stuff, and it was an all-out brawl in this episode. An awesome one to lead it off. So, thoughts on this one from you two? Uh, I think this fight is just clear proof that Shatter is the best hammer bot in battle bots, in my opinion. I mean... Yeah. It has a great driver, has a great hammer, and it just dominated Lockjaw this entire fight. Just yeah, I've I've been saying that. Uh, I've been saying well, I've been saying for like probably like a month or so that Shatter is the the hammer bot in BattleBots because like Vita is cool and all, but they just haven't convinced me, and they're not aggressive enough. You know, they like, wait. They they always wait for a good hit. They wait for a good hit, and that that takes away the fun. You know. It, with Shatter, Shatter's like Shatter's going up against like Ghost Raptor who has like a deadly horizontal spinner and they're like, Okay, I'll just I'll just slam into it with my hammer. I don't care. Like they, they aren't afraid to just like go balls to the wall and just like attack him. Like even in this picture, like Lockjaw Spinner's right there, but they're like, I don't I don't care. I'm gonna still wail on him. Yeah. Definitely is yeah, Shatter has just been all out aggressive of this year that was they went they went weapon on weapon with ghost raptor as pori said they went weapon on weapon with malice while even losing the head to their hammer and they even though they waited on captain shredderator they still showed a bunch of signs of aggression then here of course person one of the biggest moments of the fight in my opinion here, I think Lockjaw really underestimated the power of Shatter's hammer because Donald talked yeah. about in, in his game plan and how he, he, how he was pretty sure that Shatter would not get through his top armor. And in a few shots, we saw big pieces of the top armor he added flying off, showing that Shatter was still puncturing it, was doing a bunch of damage and stuff, as you'd notice that uh, in the replays and such. And and Lockjaw eventually he, uh, burned out their motors once again, is what I guess what that was. Is, <laughs> once again. Yeah. So I'm not 100% sure on whether it was Lockjaw burning out their motors or if Shatter 
got and punctured one of those motors and stuff. I'm pretty sure it's the first option, but I I could very much be wrong here, here and so on and and such. Yeah. So could you say? Would you say that they shattered the top armor of Lockjaw? <laughs> ha 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 ha. <laughs> You left me in a lockjaw there, Porter. Uh, All right, we need to put need to put some quarters in the cliche jar. That's true. Yeah, okay. Don't make a big one. don't make a big deal about this green, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we have so much fun here. I, I'm trying to have some fun before I get bullied in a few minutes. Hey, you still got three fights to go. Well, two more fights after this. Yeah, two and a half. So, yeah, so Shatter will move on to the next round. Fantastic victory from them, including, I think this is the first time since 2016 a Hammerbot has made the top 16. Let's find out if Shatter can make the top eight, which, well, is, I mean, which is where Beta and Chomp were in 2016. Black, or, oh, Black Blacks, oh, Blacksmith. Crap, I forgot about them. Let's see if Shatter, let's see if Sh yeah, my apologies, Al Kindle, but yeah. So <laughs> let's see if Sh let's see if Shatter it ends up being the first bot since first hammer bot since 2016 to make the Elite Eight and even potentially make the Final Fours. I think Shatter's definitely got the potential to do it and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely have the durability and stuff. And that hammer has been very much capable of doing a lot of damage. It's here. Mm -hmm. So anything else from you two? No. All right. No. So, so we'll see Shatter in the next round where they will take on the winner of Copperheaded Mammoth, whom we will discuss <laughs> later. Next up, we got Jackpot and Rotator. Now, as Jackpot, they came into this one with a back with a plow attached to their backside. The team Mad Catter helped them create. A, in order to provide some extra defense against Rotator or, and such. That's their opponent here. Uh, as Rotator came in with their forks configuration for this one, along with their horizontal spinner in an undercutter formation. And here for this one, and, and this is the first, this is one of the first battles between when they've showed off the team's game plans where Jackpot didn't even chose not to even reveal their game plan here. Now, as we I don't were, know why they didn't. They could just go on yeah. screen and be like wedge, and like that be it. <laughs> like you know, like it, you know, you see them plus you know bolt a wedge to the back of the robot. Like, what do you think the strategy is gonna be? <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he. I wonder if Jackpot kind of did it because they were just because suppose just because according to Victor Soto and as well. Uh, jackpot and their and an instagram post they they kept two bots out the version with the forks that we've seen in some of their previous battles and then this version right here because they knew victor soto was spying on them looking to see what they were coming with and jackpot was working with the one with the forks configuration which kind of led victor soto to doing that and such mm -hmm. so that could be a potential reason for that but yeah, Victor's a bit of a sneaker. He sneaked in on death roll last year also. Yep. And yeah, so thoughts on this battle from you two? It was a good fight. It was, it was probably my favorite fight of the night. It was just kept me at the edge of my seat. There were a lot of good hits. Um, I feel like Jackpot should have just like kept it the same way they were. Like, you know, like the, the wedge, like... It was okay for what it was, but I mean, Rotator could get under it with the forks. Like, you know, it. I feel like they probably would have fared a better chance if they had just been all offense and just went at them with the spinner. Yeah. Well, if you recall from a few weeks ago in our 20, 20 postseason predictions, what I said about this fight, I'm now $1 million in debt, so. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, yep. Well, you'll be you're about to be more than a million dollars in debt once we get to the yeah. fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, so when at the beginning of this fight, it looked like Jackpot's strategy was actually working like at first as yeah, as Jackpot yeah. was winning the first part of this fight as 
they started off leading with the bat, leading off with the wedge, edge and stuff, and managed to catch Victor Soto on it a few times as they caught him off guard a little bit, kind of like with this entire configuration. Then managed to land a few big hits, which according to Rotator, or the, those first few shots actually did a ton of damage as Vic, one of Victor Soto's wheel guards was heavily damaged after this battle, I believe. Yeah. And, yeah. But then Victor's, but then Victor or managed to adapt to that strategy. Started started leading with the forks against Jackpot's plow. Managed to get underneath Jackpot, and then simply did a tombstone in like the tombstone versus lockjaw fight. Turned his spinner and managed to chew up Jackpot pretty badly with that thing, and such. And then eventually Jackpot got flipped over, and it was all over from there for them. Yeah. But yeah, this was an awesome fight, fight by both teams and such. Like, like jackpot, jackpot for a bot that's four thousand, literally cost four thousand dollars. Like they did so well all this season, and it it was too bad that they ended up going out after this battle. But but I can't wait to see jackpot coming in the future. As they have been highly hinting that they are going to return next season, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, they posted they posted that cab and everything. It looks looks yep. nice. Yeah, definitely. So anything else on this battle from you two? Can someone please give me a million dollars, please? <laughs> I, I I I need to get out of debt. My, I was already in debt to begin with. I don't need to I don't need a million on me. Good set mm-hmm. up a GoFundMe page. Yeah. We'll set, <laughs> we'll set one up with a million with a million dollar goal, although it will increase. Once we get to the fight, yeah. and... I lost a million. I I, I lost a bet in battle once, and now I need to pay up. <laughs> <laughs> there <you> go, <laughs> oh man! All right, well, Rotator moves on, where they will take on the winner of Endgame and Perfect Phoenix, which we are discussing next. Which this was the fight I predicted to be the big upset in this tournament. <laughs> did, that, did that happen? Unfortunately, no. Oh, we tried to tell you. Yeah, yeah, they tried to tell me, but I wouldn't listen. But it's not like it's not like that hurt me too much compared to one of the three of us. <laughs> well, it's more. <laughs> Why are you bullying me? Oh man, yeah, we'll get we'll get to we'll get to the fight that really hurt one of the three of us. Well, it's more like it really hurt two of the three of us in terms of our confidence things. It hurt one. It hurt one of us severely in the bracket area. Is what I should say. But yeah, when we get to this battle here, end game aim came in with a similar configuration. They came in with for tombstone. And just charged right, Perfect Phoenix, trying to be aggressive and such. Perfect Phoenix kind of went, kind of went head on with Endgame. Managed to win, managed to win, managed to get one successful shot. But I think it was all over for Perfect Phoenix after that, as Endgame just kept their front towards them, pushed them around, and eventually flipped, the, got them upside down in the screws. So thoughts on this bell from you two? <laughs> um yay end game one one of my top three one of my top four one of my top three com- bots competing this year is still in it that's good yeah it was, I was i mean short but sweet you know just some it went about how i expected it to go yeah sadly it didn't go how i expected it to but that's <laughs> but that's okay because it's all in good fun and in such yeah. and it was still an epic fight however though one concern i do ha- i did have for end game after the end of this battle was the beginning of that where where perfect phoenix took advantage of some gyro stuff that end game was having which led to the first shot that perfect phoenix managed yeah. to land on end game could be a potential concern but end game even though that issue happened at the beginning of the battle it wasn't a problem with for them for the rest of the fight and such yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, then Endgame landed a ton of dev- a few devastating shots, like what we saw them do and perfect in their battles with bells with hypershock and tombstone and they will move on where they will take on rotator in the next round and such yeah i do hope perfect phoenix returns once again it sounds like perfect phoenix is looking to return and once again for next season as tyler did a great job uh including yeah. including there's a washington post article about perfect phoenix x in the news yeah. it was last week and such and and so on so yeah i'm sure i'm sure i'll be back so yeah anything else about this battle or should we get to the next one i say, yeah, we, should next. Stay, I say we should stay on this fight and only this fight we should not continue at all whatsoever we're not the end game versus perfect phoenix pod. so yeah. civilian arc yeah. then you got something you want to say to me for picking perfect phoenix over end game here uh yeah uh your prediction wasn't perfect Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good all right on to this next battle where we got the three seed copperhead and the 30 seed mammoth so as you as you might know copperhead was <laughs> civilian arcs pick to win the whole thing so we might have to make fun of him for it a little bit but at a level where it's all just for good fun because that's what we do here and such so Let's go ahead and get started with roasting civilian arc. No, I mean discussing this battle and well, such. So while you do that, I'm gonna down this IBC root beer. But while before you start, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? what? <laughs> oh my god, he's down. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, oh, while you're taking a <laughs> while you're taking a break from that, I I forgot I forgot what your girlfriend said to you, civilian, for choosing oh. Copperhead over Mammoth. So can you remind yeah. me what what she said to you and such? She said. <laughs> she said my battle bot nut was busted. <laughs> Oh man, that that's that's hilarious and such. But all right, that's to fun. this fight for once now. So Mammoth came into this one with their def- defense configuration, similar to what they used against Huge, and yeah. they pulled off another major surprise here as they managed to take out Huge. They took out Copperhead here and stuff. Pulling out, pulling off the three versus thirty upset that we saw happen in 2016, and bring, brought that back to this season, and so on, and and such. So, so thoughts on this battle? Um, never saw the fight. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> have never will. It's um sorry, but this, the, sorry, but this point is going to be full of spoilers for you, civilian. Yeah, we're about to spoil the fight. Yep. Um, oh, okay. It was a good fight, but it, like, as much as I would, lo- I'd love the fact that I get the roast civilian arc for this. It's <laughs> almost, it's almost bittersweet because I really didn't agree with the decision. So like, th- it's like a double-edged sword. Like I look at it, I'm like, yeah, civilian arc robot got knocked out in the first round, but at the same time, it's like it got knocked out by a. A questionable judge's decision like I, if i had if i had the if i was a judge the way i would probably judge it is i'd give copperhead four to one on damage and i'd probably give mammoth two to one on the other two because there is definitely control and aggression from copperhead so you can't unanimously give it to mammoth but mammoth didn't really do any damage to copperhead like that like the drum spinning was pretty much a technical issue on copperhead's part like can you count that as damage but like meanwhile copperhead's like ripping off pieces of mammoth and stuff you know yeah definitely is yeah that's kind of, i'm kind of in the same boat but i'm gonna make fun of civilian arc anyway because i am too it's not it's bad. not like he it's not like he could come all the way down here and beat the crap out of me for it and such <laughs> you see him like come crazy, through the man. window you see him come through the window behind you and like, you just start wailing on you. 
But yeah, so what ended up happening in this one is Copperhead got that drum spinner up to speed. He landed a bunch of big shots with that drum spinner, knocked off a bunch of bits and pieces of Mammoth. But then their drum spinner stopped working, and which according to both Porinaga and Civilian Arc, that was supposedly because of radio problems they were having, which is why their drum spinner spun up, up not long, well, with like 30 seconds left into the battle and such. But yeah. during that middle part, we saw Mammoth get some excellent lifts and stuff, but Copperhead, they still had some control moments in that, even when their weapon yeah. died and such. So, yeah. Basically, I, mean, I saw this both, one as um, yeah, I saw this one as a close fight, but I I did disagree with the decision as well. But I'll be talking a little more about that uh, in probably a few minutes and such. But yeah, it's um like the, the like they both throw pretty sloppily in this fight. I'll admit, like Copperhead was running away a lot, but Mammoth wasn't really capitalizing that much on on the fact that copperhead's deadly spinner was gonna, and like it was a radio thing or, or something i forget what exactly it was if you look at robert cowan's channel he explains what he thinks it was but it was pretty much just like a technical issue on their part and you can even tell like during the fight like this drum is like twitching a little bit so it's definitely something pertaining to that but at the same time a lot of i see what a lot of people saying like oh copperhead just did cosmetic damage but like those like forks in front of in the front, like, those aren't really cosmetic. They're forks. They're made for getting under. That's a part of the robot. And on top of that, at the end of the fight, like, Mammoth's right wheel was, like, wobbly. Like, if Copperhead had gotten a, a good shot, it probably would have been ripped off. Definitely. And such. So, thoughts on this battle, civilian? Uh, never seen it. Never have, never will. <laughs> uh, from what it looks like, though, it, lo- it looks like Mammoth won that, I think. In my opinion, if I were to watch the fight, my parts would ag- my mammoth parts would definitely agree with you on that. No, but uh, oh, in, in all honesty, I think Mammoth did get this win. In my opinion, wow, I, th- I think it was more aggressive. At, yeah, I know I'm for shaming myself at this point, but Mammoth had much more control. It was much more aggressive. Yeah, Copper had that damage, but. I mean, Mammoth was just dominating for the most part. I mean, maybe not a dominating like what Beta did to Rotator back in Episode 3, but Mammoth was still doing a lot to drop her head. So, yeah, yeah. I'll, since both of you explained what you thought the judges said, and I'll explain mine in a lot more depth now. So, yeah, I disagreed with the judge's decision as well. Well, I technically supported Lisa's choice, as I believe it was her that chose uh, Copperhead over Mammoth. Mammoth and such. Jason missed, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I felt Copperhead did a lot more damage than Mammoth in this battle with that drum spinner or in such. Like, Pori named off a lot of examples of stuff that Copperhead was able to do to Mammoth. And I would give mm-hmm. Dam- Mammoth a damage point for the few lifts and the few flips they got in on that one. and but the, As well as Copperhead's uh, temporarily dead drum spinner or in such, but Copperhead still did a ton more damage. As for aggression and and I would score that one two to one in favor of Mammoth as they were they were aggressive like throughout the battle even though they weren't exactly the most successful old during during most of that battle old and such but I would still give them a lot of credit for that including when Copperhead's drum spinner was down like said they were they were running away for quite a few moments and send that battle just to avoid getting smothered by Mammoth and such, which would give them a loss in aggression, in my opinion. Then as for control, I'd score that one two to one in favor of Mammoth. Copperhead did have quite a few great moments in there with that drum spinner, showed a lot of control and stuff. But when that drum spinner was down, that really hurt them in that category and such. Mm-hmm. But even with that, though, oh, I still score the battle six to five in favor of Copperhead and, and such. But 
I'm not too mad yeah. about this. Is this 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 wasn't one where it was obvious it should have gone into Copperhead's favor and such like like it was a really close decision, well fought by both machines and such, such and 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 so on. And we'll see the we'll see the we'll see the uh, the high underdog uh, moving on to the next round where they're gonna take on Shatter and such. So. Yeah, I got um, civilian arc I, team black dragon or team ribot. Uh, how about neither? <laughs> wow. Whoa, how about how about team tantrum? Ooh, team tantrum. Okay, we can check yeah. that. I, I, I yeah, tantrum is, a, tantrum is a good one here. here so, so, yeah, um, with this fight, like it was very close, so like it's. Plus, we get to make fun of civilian art. So, like, it's not an all-bad thing, you know? And also the fact that Copperhead could probably beat Mammoth, and they probably... Or not Copperhead, um, Shatter could probably beat Mammoth, and they probably could not beat Copperhead, so Shatter might have a better chance to get further into the bracket, and I like Shatter, so, like... I mean, they still might have a hard time, because Mammoth's, like, a, a scary robot to face. It's so obtuse. All right, so one question that Pori, I'm going to have you answer this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, he's getting ready. <laughs> oh, God. When is this? All right, so you might recall when I roasted Civilian Arc in the last podcast that I mentioned that Civilian Arc bragged about going 16 and 0 in the bounties in the last episode and such mm-hmm. and said that he was going to jinx himself in this episode. Do you mm-hmm. think he actually jinxed himself and that's the reason why Copperhead lost? Oh yeah, cuz I feel like I feel like um I feel like Greg Munson saw the podcast and he <laughs> went he called up Discovery and he was like shit bro we gotta change some of these fight outcomes like in reality jackpot split rotator in half copper copperhead was just in a arena with a bunch of like pipes pretty much and uh what was the other fight you got wrong lockjaw versus shatter and lockjaw shattered shatter so like in but in reality then they did like some tv magic and they edited to frame it that they look different just to mess with civilian art to jinx him you know uh yep that definitely sounds about right that's my vote as well so i wonder who's gonna have the third vote here why not bring back the coin oh god oh god <laughs> this is what this is about all right all right mr penny did civilian arc jinx himself this week heads or tails civilian which one is in your favor is either in my favor well, if the answer is no, that's in your favor. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, d- I like heads. Go heads for whatever. Ooh, the coin betrays civilian arc again. Goes with tails, uh, even though you probably can't tell. Of course it did. <laughs> <laughs> See, the civilian... The coin's the coin, the rigged, man. See, civilian arc does overreact. So, are you high, or do you need to just go see your psychiatrist, civilian? Both, both, man. Both. <laughs> Every day, bro. Oh man! And so, civilian, who's your new champion now? Since your tantrum. champion is out, Ooh, tantrum. Oh, still Copperhead, still Copperhead. I mean, I would, I, I honestly, I would, I would pop off for a tantrum championship. That'd be pretty sick. Oh yeah, tantrum would definitely be a good one. And like that'd be a, that'd be the ultimate dark horse story. I feel. Yeah. So, Pori, anything else to say to civilian arc after that one? Um, because I got nothing. Sorry. Healy Bula, Chelsea Labak, mine Tatsumi Liane. What does that mean? Oh, oh Pori, never mind. Pori will get it. <laughs> oh, it's your anime thing. That's what it is. <laughs> Man. Oh, you gotta do this to me. Yeah. 
Well, we'll see Mammoth take on Shatter in the next round, and we'll see we'll see if Mammoth pulls off a third surprise this season, as they have been full of surprises as for this season and such. So, on yeah, I guess the... I'm betting against them. Yeah, sadly I am as well. <laughs> All right, on to the next battle where we got Sawblaze and Kraken. And as you can see in the image, Kraken is clearly just a magnet for the opponent. Kraken's jaws is just a magnet for the opponent's team, opponent's weapons and stuff. And as you can see in that yeah. image, and as you might have seen if you've seen this fight and such. And so Sawblaze came back in with their hammer saw configuration, but with a new material as they felt like they needed a material, they felt like they needed to use a type of hammer saw with a material that could get them a little more, a lot more slicing power, or as they were hoping to aim for the, the top parts, the internals of Kraken, which I know lots of teams it? haven't been able to successfully get to. What's up, Corey? Can I say, it? Can I say what it is? Go ahead. AR 550. <laughs> well, well done, Corey. As he is right about that and such. So, thoughts on this, Bal, from so, you too? So, fun fact about this image that you brought up. Kraken, Kraken's mouth is fully open in this image. Sawblaze's blade just straight up got stuck in it. And, uh, and they had to pause the fight and, like, pry Sawblaze out of there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Sawblaze posted a pic about that on Instagram. Yeah. And it as did Kraken. I think Kraken was first. Between the two of them, but I'm not 100 percent sure. They, they they definitely both talked about it. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, yeah they got, he got stuck in there. But I mean, it was a it was a fun fight. I mean, I knew I kind of I mean, Kraken is sick. I love Kraken, but Sawblaze. Enough said. I I think it's kind of weird though that Sawblaze like the Kraken didn't get counted out. Like he was like I like, one wheel for like half the fight, and they were just like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Although that that snipe shot out of the wheel was like beautiful, like it just that was like one of the most beautiful like wheel removals I'm seeing in battle bots probably. Definitely is is yeah, civilian. You got anything? Uh, Kraken was robbed. It was underseeded. It needed a better seed, and it's out because of this. Yeah, I'm like it a lot. Went, of... It went one and two. <laughs> Well, I'm, yeah, but they did like a great one in two, though. I'm yeah, I'm kind of true. like a lot of people on the internet where I'm confused how Witch Doctor was ranked one seed higher than Kraken after Kraken beat them and such, but it's They're not popular. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm confused how Tombstone's top one one and two seed. Yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think you need to go get some cough medicine, Pori. Yeah. But yeah, those are those are probably those are potentially accurate reasons for why they why those two things are true, and such and and so yeah, kind of like to add to Pori's thing. That was when Kraken was supposed to release on Sawblaze. They actually couldn't release them at first because Sawblaze's weapon managed to actually dig into the crusher of Kraken, managed to damage quite a few of the springs and such. I've mm -hmm. said, and I believe Matt Spurks exposed that, uh, that, which was some major damage to their crusher or, and such. So, supposedly damage that caught up to them, them because supposedly it was, supposedly it wasn't much of an issue coming out of like the, supposedly it was slowly becoming more of a, more of an issue ooh, with, Mm -hmm. all three of the regular season battles like the ones with black dragon witch doctor and huge as you notice that kraken managed to bite uh, down on all three of them right on the weapon and so there was potentially mm -hmm. some damage that just caught up to them done by their opponent's weaponry and such and so mm -hmm. yeah saw places saw ended up getting wedged into the crusher of kraken resulting in the crew needing to come out and separate them enough and then position them of course or in a way where they could skip out on this footage on that footage and stuff where 
and such. And we saw an excellent fight, including like what Pori said. I'm not I'm not sure if that was po- possibly multiple shots, as we saw Sawblaze land a few hammer shots. Uh, it's including turning over Kraken a few times at the beginning of this battle, but. Yeah. But that last shot that knocked off the wheel completely was awesome and such. And yeah, I do agree the the fact that they shouldn't have counted Kraken out and such because Sawblaze is because con- the first reason is Sawblaze is continuing to engage in the battle oh, and stuff. Yeah. Like one of the reasons why I think Tombstone was counted out too early in the battle with Scorpios. Oh, so which more of that's explained in the. Uh, sorry about that. Somebody he just came in and such, but but yeah, I kind of agree with that. That Sawblaze shouldn't have been counted out there. There or or I agree that Kraken shouldn't have been counted out and such. I don't know why I was thinking Sawblaze is and such. Sawblaze actually lost the fight. Yeah, Sawblaze actually lost the fight and such. Such, yeah. but but yeah, even when Sawblaze, Sawblaze wasn't engaging on Kraken. So Kraken was Kraken was inching like towards or Sawblaze even, and they they weren't spinning in circles. So I would consider that controlled movement, and if that kind of fits the definition of that, but and such. So, what were you two, you, both of your opinions on that? I would have counted them out. Uh, it's as you said, Green. Sawblaze was still engaging. It was still I mean, attacking. Scorpios was still attacking Tombstone when they got counted out. I'm not saying that Tombstone should have been counted out, though. I I, th- yeah. I don't think Tombstone should have been counted out. I think it's. I, I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not saying that there's any definitive thing saying like this robot should have been counted or this one shouldn't have been. But right. It, once again, it's just a lack of consistency. Oh no! Yeah, I get it. There, there's yeah. definitely a ton of inconsistency this season with a lot of stuff. Yeah, definitely. And so then, last question is: Did you guys agree with the judge's decision and stuff? As this one did go no. the full three minutes, as hinted. No. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no way Kraken could have won that. They were missing a wheel. Sawblaze did way more damage, and Sawblaze had better control. They were more aggressive. I could crack it a, a point or two, sure, but that was definitely Sawblaze's fight. Yeah, I'd give it to Sawblaze. Mm, eight to eight to three, eight three decision. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I'd 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 score it probably the same. I would guess the same as Civilian Arc, or as I did agree with the decision. I scored damage four to one in favor of Sawblaze here, as I would give Kraken a lot of credit for biting down on the weaponry in such that moment, even though I don't think it caused a lot of damage and stuff. Yeah. But I still give Kraken a lot of credit for that and such. And I think that w- and then yeah. I'd, I'd give Kraken an aggression point, but I'd give Sawblaze the other, the other two. So even what with one wheel, Kraken was continuing mm-hmm. to be incredibly aggressive throughout this battle and such. And just as Matt Spurk yeah. is, is his driving style is be is to be very aggressive and such, and we saw and we've seen a lot of that all season from Matt Spurk and such. Mm-hmm. That's for control two to one once again, and as even though I was kind of debating earlier on whether to give all three points to Sawblaze or give two of them to Sawblaze, because really the one big control moment. The real, really, the one big place that you could really give Kraken a control point area would be that bite right there, and you. Yeah. It's really hard to say whether that that really should be a control moment for Kraken or not, because uh, yeah, because both of the both true. of them were trying to take control of the other or and such like. Kraken was trying to take Sawblaze into the screws, I believe is what Matt Spurk said, or it might have been the other way around, while Sawblaze was trying to drag Kraken around, because you'd know mm-hmm. you'd notice that when one of them tries to do some sort of action, like with Sawblaze at some moment, like their plow would get, their front would just go completely up in the air. Compared to Kraken, where if they make one action, one of their wheels would just go up in the air and such. Like 
that was a that was pretty much a driving war when that happened and such and it's hard to tell like who had control of that moment and such because although in my opinion it would probably be neither of them them and such yeah i'd probably give i'd probably give kraken like a point in each category and that's yeah. it yeah i i'm, I'm yeah. gonna give kraken a control point right, and such but yeah, this was another really entertaining fight from Kraken, including their continuing to impress and such. Now, as if you think that biting saw a place of spinner wasn't possible, well, well, if you didn't think Kraken getting a bite on saw places spinner was possible, Kraken's just been pulling off the impossible. And I was yeah, managed to pull off that, managed to get a bite on Huge's spinner and such, which is so impressive if to see and such. And yeah, yeah, this is definitely the best season Matt Spurk has had. And now is yeah, all four of his opponents finished in at least the top 16 last season and all his regular season and including Sawblaze as well. And then they managed to mm-hmm. beat one of them as well. And they put up a heck of a fight against the other against the other three and such. Like mm-hmm. Matt Spurk has definitely hinted that he's going to bring Kraken back next season he's got a few improvements he's hinted on and stuff i hope we'll get to see a, an even better version of kraken back as yeah uh, yeah this is a great season for kraken yeah I think he confirmed he applied already yeah I th- yeah i, want, I mean I they're not gonna, they're not gonna get rejected like <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't see kraken getting rejected either because because yeah yeah Kraken, Kraken is a, Kraken is a very unique, even a fan favorite design. And the fact that they took out Witch Doctor this season, and then such, mm-hmm. gotta give them a lot of credit for that. Yeah, like they they might have had a three and four record at the end of this season, but I mean, it, it was Not still bad. a pretty great, still a pretty great showing from them. I think they got more coming because I think they're in one of the next two bounties. Because oh, I, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. we saw we saw in the previews that they take on Rusty mm-hmm. do at we some know, point. Do we have any idea which bounty it is or no? I would not no. know. Oh, well, it's either the Witch Doctor or the Son of Waiachi bounty. I'm gonna yeah. pray. It's, I'm gonna pray it's the Witch Doctor bounty just because I want to see a Witch Doctor Kraken rematch and that'd be fun. And and the Sow bounty was already spoiled to us. Yeah, a Sow a Sow Kraken rematch would be neat though. Yeah, definitely. After after Kraken had a very after Sow and Kraken was reasonable after Kraken was that close to successfully box rushing Son of Waiachi last season, and and such, which like that was that would be an entertaining rematch. Yeah, I'm predict. Yeah. I, I bet Kraken goes with the cop or goes with the son of Waiachi, a bounty and such. Which, which, yeah, like Civilian Arc said, there's been some spoilers that you might know. You might have spoilers. noticed if you looked closely and such. We're not going to share yeah. any of them because we're rel- we're we're semi nice people and such, but we're not yeah. mean enough to spoil stuff like that. And so. Yeah. Yeah. So, can we take a moment to appreciate how far Kraken has come? Like, when they debuted in season three, they went like one and four, and they and like they lost to like th- some of their opponents that they lost to were definitely like lower tier robots. Now this season, they've got three wins under their belt at least, and their three losses are all to like top tier robots. Four, yeah, yeah, four. Four, four. Their four, their four losses are to top tier robots. Four. You know, they they've definitely had a glow a glow up. I feel, and also on top of that, every loss they had was like either close or well, this one wasn't really close, but but like Black Dragon and Huge were both pretty good performances on its part. Yeah, without a doubt, is. Yeah, I think Red Devil was their only win, and then win when they debuted in 2018. Mm-hmm. Even such. They, like, I mean, Red Devil, they're all they're like they lost to Lockjaw, they lost yeah. to uh, Shark Oprian, they lost to uh, Gemini, yeah, and Gemini. they lost to Chomp. Uh, yep. I mean, Red Devil was probably their second best opponent they fought, besides like of course Lockjaw. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. definitely Red, agree. Their with Red that. Devil performance was very impressive, and I mean, last year they, and then last year they did a little bit better. You know, they yep. they beat Shatter in an exhibition fight, which they beat Ribot which as well. Chubby. They beat the greatest robot in the field, Ribot. Like you know, Kraken <laughs> people give Kraken a lot of crap, but they're a good robot. Yeah, it, the Crusher might not do as much damage as like Quantum, um, for example, in twenty twenty nine. Yeah, in 2019 in season, like doesn't do as much damage, but it's still a yeah. fun bot to watch. Matt Spurk has done a great job driving it, uh, improving it, yeah. and such. And yeah, like what Pori said, gotta appreciate how far Kraken has come. Um, <laughs> but here's the here's the hot take of the day: Kraken wouldn't have fared fared against any of these robots as well as Rivot had. If Kraken fought huge, or if, if Quantum had fought huge. It'd be like a KO in a minute. If they fought Witch Doctor, it'd be a KO within a minute. So I'll play the same thing. Like, Quantum has a better Crusher, but like, it's like. Kraken has a better everything else. Kraken is, is, is a more durable robot. You know, they've. And they. I, I, I might be. This might be a hot take, but I feel like Kraken might be a little bit better driven, too. Yeah, I think that, too. I think I would too. agree with that. That's that is. I know some people would disagree because, you know. Spectre did so well in King of Bots and all that. Quote from Matt Spurk, you can't kill the Kraken. Yeah. That is nope. very true here. So yeah, we'll definitely we'll have to determine at the end of the season like who was the most durable bot this season because Kraken is definitely up there there and such. Oh yeah. Uh, just a few there. other examples I could name as potential contenders. Here's and so on. So so yeah, on to the next battle. As we'll see Sawblaze in the next round, where they will take on the winner of what was the last matchup of the night, Witch Doctor and Scorpios, which yeah, we'll discuss that later. But on to that. the next battle, where we have the two seed Bloodsport, who will be taking on the 31 seed oh. Rough. So in this battle, we saw the first appearance of the Tribar spinner of Bloodsport. Basically, they're Basically, their three blade spinner and such was the first appearance of it. Their opponent is Gruff, the tank of battle bots here. Bot that is the bot that withstood Tombstone for three full minutes last season and such. And gotta say, we already lost Copperhead early, but after the first shot from Bloodsport. First thing I was thinking of was, are we about to lose the two seed as well? Because after that one shot, a third of Bloodsport's spinner went flying off and such, leaving Bloodsport without a weapon, without a work. Well, it was working, but without a balanced weapon for the rest of the yeah. battles. We saw them try to spin Pretty up good. a few times, but balance was a problem and such. And and then we saw Gruff coming in, trying to pull, trying to pull off the upset and such. And we saw that we saw them get some good control moments at first. Managed to get some good flame and get that fork underneath them, including nearly flip Bloodsport. But then after a while, Gruff started having drivetrain issues, ooze and such, similar to what we saw them have at the end of their battle with Whiplash, I believe it was. As and such, like not exactly what we saw against Extinguishers. I'm gonna leave that out and such. But thoughts on this battle from you two? Um, if this was if this fight had aired in the fight night, it wouldn't have made TV. <laughs> and my one might have made TV because they're popular robots, but yeah, like if this fight was if this was like a fight between like Deadlift and uh What's a what's a horizontal spinner that deadlift and like kingpin like it wouldn't have made TV because it just there wasn't a it was definitely the least entertaining fight of the night which I mean I understand because Bloodsport couldn't really do much with that blade breaking and I was actually surprised to see that happen. Yeah, I thought after Bloodsport lost its weapon, it was just going to be a full domination fight for Gruff, but that that one that wasn't it, Chief. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, as I feel, I feel 
I was hoping we would have gotten to see a lot more out of that battle, even after Bloodsport lost their weapon and such. But it was a kind of, it was kind of a little bit dull, especially when Gruff started having drive issues and such. Like Gruff did yeah. get some entertaining moments, like after Bloodsport lost their spinner with that flame and such. But after that, all the entertainment just really disappeared, or and such and. It was pretty much a push battle well, to see who could control the fight better between Bloodsport, who had two-thirds of a weapon and and two wedgelets and stuff, compared to Gruff, who had their one lifting fork and a uh, not, not functioning as well drive train and, and such. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we saw this battle go the full three minutes where they awarded a split decision to Bloodsport and stuff because Bloodsport was able to control the battle all while Gruff was having drive issues and such. Mm-hmm. But then I'll kind of explain more on that decision and uh, probably in a few minutes and stuff. So, so yeah, the yeah. thoughts on this battle from you two? Might as well just ask then. Do you guys did you guys agree or disagree with the judge's decision here? Because there has been talk on the internet, people who think Gruff should have won that battle. What do you guys think about that? Um, no, I, I agree with it. It's see, um, Bloodsport might have lost its weapon, but like that's about all it did. It still controlled the fight. If it, it, now, if Gruff had, if Gruff wasn't like limping the whole fight and they actually like got control and got like more than like what they got one or two lifts in if they got more than that in then yeah gruff absolutely should have won the fight but gruff was at like like 55 percent drive at that throughout the fight and it just didn't dominate at all and it could have like you know when you're fighting blood sport like if that happens like you want to capitalize on that you want to be like oh they don't they can't spin anymore so let's just control them and dominate this fight but they couldn't do that and i feel because of that blood sport should have won because blood sport they're not a push bot but they were still pushing gruff around and dominating yeah which i think i think something like this is kind of like the purpose of those wedgelets they added so they could have a little more push power in case of their weapon died knowing some of the issues they had last season so what do you think civilian did you agree with um, the decision so I'm going to take it a point on BattleBots judging criteria. First up, damage. Um, I'm going to go three to two for um, Gruff on that. I don't. A lot of people say like four to one or five to nothing on damage for Gruff. I actually disagree. I mean, while Gruff did take out Bloodsport's weapon, it still had like it still seemed like it had a lot of internal damage towards it. Yeah. So I'd say Gruff barely edges out damage on that. Control, I'd give two to one for Bloodsport mm-hmm. on that because Bloodsport controlled for the most part, but Gruff got some lifts in and pushes. As for aggression, I it's a bit of a coin toss to see who'd get that third point for aggression. I'd say just... I'd say... I'd probably say I'd probably say Bloodsport just because of Gruff's maneuverability problems. So yeah. that would that's like a let me do that. Six that's a six five. that's six five. That's six five, so that's a split decision right there. Yeah, that's about where I am with it too. But yeah, if you want to hear that more in depth, Civilian did post a video on this battle well, earlier today, I believe. He, yeah, he anyway, me in it. I was disappointed. Yeah, should check that out <laughs> oh, and such like I'll, I'll be watching that after we're done recording this so as for my as for my input on this yes as for how i scored this battle i disagreed with the decision as well i believe that gruff should have won this battle mm-hmm. but i'm not mad at all about this one as this was a really close battle and such as i completely understand that uh, like I'm completely understand cool that that blood sport ended up taking this one. How I would have scored it as for damage, I would have scored it four to one in favor of Gruff here. Now as Gruff 
Gruff did a lot more damage than Bloodsport, and really that the only damage that Bloodsport did was that one hit that resulted in their weapon breaking. That was really all the primary weapon action we saw out of them, but I'd, I'm still going to give them a small amount of credit for Gruff's drivetrain, even though that's technically like an issue that's like that's, that I'm pretty sure is on Gruff. Um, yeah, it's probably on Gruff. Yeah. yeah. Which is why I'd give which is why I give Bloodsport massive credit for damage, because, yeah, there was the blade that broke. Oh, we saw flamethrower action before the drivetrain issues. They ripped off one of Bloodsport's wedgelets with one of their forks and almost got a flip on Bloodsport throughout that match, and I give Gruff a lot of credit for that. As for aggression, and both bots were quite aggressive of th- until until Gruff had drivetrain issues, and that was when, and at that point, Bloodsport was far superior or with aggression and even control as well, because control had the same argument. So, in yeah. both in both of those categories, I give Bloodsport two out of three points for aggression and control, leading to a six to five mm-hmm. decision in favor of Gruff here. But either way, this was a really close battle, even though it wasn't the most entertaining thing and so on. And yeah. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait to see Bloodsport in the next round where they're going to take on the winner of the next bat. The next fight we're going to discuss, where <laughs> which will be Tantrum or Fusion and, and such. And yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. Gruff definitely had a great season this year once again. And like, I don't know if it would exactly be as great as them lasting the full three minutes as Tombstone, but Gruff still had a great season and such. Like the team, the team said that they, they were like testing out and learning about a new drivetrain systems. They use a new drivetrain system um, to that way they could have the weight necessary to put a second flamethrower up up and they have design pl- they have design plans and for next season to improve their drivetrain which was which was pretty much like yeah. their primary issue from this season and and such and if gruff could get that drivetrain fixed up gruff would be a heck of a bot to beat and yeah next season like they'll yeah. be they'll be so much tougher or to stop and such so yeah, any other thoughts from you two, or should we get to fusion and tantrum? Fusion and tantrum. Fuse tantrum. All right, fusion and tantrum. It is where we got the battle between the puncher and the disc spinner on tantrum, and the horizontal spinner and the vertical spinner of fusion. So as for this battle, I got to be honest when I when I thought about this fight when predicting it in my bracket. I predicted. I think this was the probably the battle where I predicted the outcome the closest to what actually happened here. Now, as we saw, yeah. we started off seeing Fusion and Tantrum come after each other with their vertical spinners. Tantrum was winning the ground game quite clearly as they were getting underneath Fusion and landed a few good hits with a puncher. But then Tantrum made a serious mistake that few that Aaron Hill commented on not long after that. Fusion started gyroing in the air and Tantrum, rather than letting them hit the floor or something like that, Tantrum used that as a time to go into it with an attack. And we saw what you see in the image right there, a weapon-on-weapon shot between their horizontal spinner and their drum spinner, leading their leading Tantrum's weapon completely bent out of place and such. Yeah. But then it wasn't long after that before Fusion got before before Tantrum got some new top armor for their future fights and stuff in the form of a 250 pound robot, uh, basically. Yeah. No, I should really <laughs> say this: a, some flaming top armor for their next few battles, because yeah. Fusion eventually got stuck under the top of Tantrum mm-hmm. and where they caught fire. For the second time yeah. this season, third if you're counting bounties as well, all you, and such. You could say that they fused. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> tantrum threw a little tantrum that they couldn't get fusion off them. Mm-hmm. Eh, that's not as good. Mm. It's kind of good. Yeah. 
But yeah, at, at one, after that happened, after that happened, Battlebot supposedly got took Fusion off of the top of Tantrum, gave Fusion a chance yeah. to prove that they were still mobile because they were technically high centered here on Tantrum. Tantrum couldn't free them. Zarin Hill was trying to shake Fusion off, but was unsuccessful. Before I'm mm-hmm. gonna guess his batteries or his motors gave out because Tantrum stopped moving as well almost right as fusion caught fire or and such and yeah because fusion proved to still be a mobile uh tantrum was awarded the win by knockout so thoughts on this bell from you two <laughs> awkward silence again I'm, I, I'm letting civilian art go first oh i get to go first yeah oh well i mean this is the 2020 champion we're talking about. I mean, I'm not surprised Tantrum pulled it off. Uh, oh, uh, oh, you think Robot can take out Tantrum? Uh, yeah, probably. I, mean. uh, but I think I might need to change my picks to Blood Sports. I think Civilian just jinxed the Balbots bracket for the second time. Nope, yeah. nope, can't change it until <laughs> you can't change it until fingers. Oh man, well, your turn, Fori. Um, yeah, it was um, that it was a cool fight. It was they kept me on the edge of my seat because, like, it was one of those fights. I thought Tantrum was gonna win it, but I didn't. Like, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. Like, when, especially when the weapon got like crooked. Like, I was like crap fusion might might actually do this but then uh fusion pulled a fusion and it just like blew up and but it was it was a fun fight it was cool i and i'm proud of tantrum for doing well definitely he is tantrum will get a difficult opponent in blood sport in the next round another horizontal spinner we'll have to see if blood if tantrum can take attacks from blood sport as well as they have as well as they have here and then when they fought valkyrie as well oh and so he on can. and yeah he can yeah i definitely believe yeah. it. it and such uh, just we'll see if they can pull off an upset and take out the two seed or if civilian arc just jinxed it and and they choose to edit edit that battle as well and <laughs> <laughs> So now basically the objective is is to never have civilian arc join Team Black Dragon. Imagine no, imagine this. Imagine Black Dragon, Ribot, and Tantrum all lose in the same episode. Then who's gonna get it's roasted? Gonna be us crying. We're gonna We're roast. Cry each- it's gonna be a roast triangle. I get nope. to roast Pori, Pori gets to roast you, you get to roast me. I it's like, like that. that one episode of uh, it's like I'm that like, one episode I, of Tom I, and Jerry where uh, Tom, Jerry, and the dog are like are like fighting and like it's just like a like tom's hitting dog with like a pipe and the dog's hitting jerry with some or no tom's hitting jerry with like a pipe and then jerry's hitting the dog and the dog's hitting tom it's just like a cycle uh yes <laughs> and that's gonna be us uh, <laughs> i like the order because i know pori is probably the worst of the three of us at roasting people but not by a lot no offense oh not by a lot i'm i'm bad at roasting people that ain't that ain't, a, that ain't wrong and then i'm good at roasting civilian arc as i proved in the last episode of this podcast but i go off when i roast hey yep <laughs> still waiting oh, on, i'm still waiting on part two of mine yeah, I'm still waiting on part two of mine. Well, Where's it at? You're way behind. Are you sure you're that good at roasting people? Yes, it's just I like to keep you guys waiting as another insult. Or Pori, Pori, right I think this is an I think this is an excuse. I think civilian arc is just that bad at roasting people. <laughs> what is this? I think he's still I think he's still recovering from getting burned in this video and the last video. God, this is just Bully civilian day in it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we'll have our day. I mean, I won't have my day because Rivot's going all the way. But no, Black Dragon's going all the way. Have his day. One of you guys are getting your day, no matter what. <laughs> yep. One of us is going to get our day. Maybe both of us. Well, probably both. Probably both of us, since Tantrum's obviously going to win the whole thing against stuff according to civilian. Yeah. 
yep. which yeah. I could definitely see that as Aaron Hill's yeah. done a terrific job this season, even though he's going to have a ha- even though he clearly is going to have a heck of a repair job after that battle when preparing. I mean, yeah, but so does Bloodsport. But yeah, I can't wait for that battle. Tantrum had another entertaining battle here, another entertaining victory, and I can't wait to see how will they do against Bloodsport in the next episode. So now on to the last battle of the episode. Witch Doctor and Scorpios here. Now as Witch yes. Doctor, the runner up from last season, had a really rough regular season going one and two who with losses to both Hydra and Kraken. But then after changing the material and their vertical spinner, managed to pull off a victory against oh, against Slammo, and then came into this battle with Scorpios here. Scorpios Oh, now is what I thought I heard about what I thought I heard Zach Lytle say is somewhere in the Facebook group. Scorpios had a surprise for vertical spinners like Witch Doctor. That was the case here as they came in with a similar vertical spinner front configuration and, and that they came in with for when they fought Hypershock in the last and the bounties pretty much where they have two forks that are quite low to the ground owned up at their front, try to keep Witch Doctor's vertical spinner away from them as much as possible. But it didn't go so well for them. As we saw Witch Doctor get a shot at the beginning of the battle that disabled Scorpios' weapon, which according to the team, that first shot managed to to, uh, cause one of the gears to snap their weapon chain and stuff, or pinch their weapon chain. I don't think it exactly broke it and stuff, but did enough damage to where Scorpios couldn't use their weapon for the rest of the battle. But Scorpios remained aggressive, even though they ended up taking a few more big shots and took it the full three minutes here. So thoughts on this battle Mm -hmm. from you two? Okay, so... I mean, Scorpio has definitely lost this fight, but they, it wasn't a bad loss by any means. They held their own. They bullied Witch Doctor around. They drove the fight still very well. Like, if their weapon hadn't died, then who knows what would have happened. But it, this was at least a very good fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, Witch Doctor won. So, yay. Another bot that I like is still competing. So that's I, like, good. I like Scorpios. I mean, yeah. I like Scorpios too. They they gave me bragging rights to uh, almost everyone except you, Pori. Because I know we we got this right. We we get yeah. those uh, we get those controversial. We're like on the same wavelength when it comes to like unpredictable fights like that. It's like you know, like next year, like Tombstone's gonna fight like like Bale Spear, and you and I are gonna get like we're gonna get that hunch. We're gonna be like. Yeah, he's gonna win this, and he's gonna really do it, and we're gonna like brag all day. First, yeah. I was wondering what fight you were talking about. But I realized it was probably Scorpios and Tombstone, oh, yeah. and yeah. such. Yeah, but we we had that. What was the other fight we we had that we predicted correctly? That everyone, Ribot Ribot versus Vita. <laughs> yeah, Ribot Vita. Forget Bita. that. Like, Ribot versus Vita. Like everyone except for me and Civilian Arc was so persistent that Vita was gonna win. And everyone, I had so it as a low it. confident pick. Just know that you still you still picked Vita, <laughs> and I didn't think yeah. Vita was gonna dominate that. I People will. were so adamant about <laughs> Vita winning, but me and Pori were like, nah, nah, nah that, that that ain't happening. And it's not even my bias towards Ribot. It's just for real drive vert. That's, yeah. what, that's, yeah. what peop, that's what that's what people that's what people told me when I picked Blood Sport over Endgame and picked that one right. I, I picked I picked End, Endgame in that to be yeah. fair, so that's fair. If yeah. I picked Blood Sport, I would have gotten seven to no there. I was the only I think no, I was one of two fan pages that picked picked a Blood Sport for that one, and I didn't see a lot of people pick Blood Sport in the confidence thing, but yeah, but yeah, we all have our moments and stuff where. Managed yeah. to pick out something yeah. and such, but but yeah, That's in this good. battle here, yeah, it was an. It is very possible, like what Pori said, that the fight may have been a lot closer if Scorpios didn't have their saw dis or vertical spinner disabled after that first shot. Here is the tides could have very easily turned, turned and stuff in this battle as. Scorpios, even though they were still still attacking a few times, I felt like dropping the weapon hurt them more because Witch Doctor sent them flying every time, him and such. 
just because of the yeah. reach of their vertical spinner compared to the position of Scorpios' weapon and such. And mm. But Zach Lytle was still driving incredibly aggressive. They were getting underneath Witch Doctor at every turn turn and such and made this a reasonably close battle and such. Like when I get when I talk about how I scored this battle, I actually had this battle as a very close one. Like the like both of the split decisions and such. So so yeah. What do you guys think of the judge's decision and stuff? It was fine. I agreed with it. it. It was a good fight. It was. It was. The score would probably be fairly close, like go uh, at like seven to four or something. But like you know, it it was a it was definitely witch doctor's fight, and I agree with the decision. At first, I disagreed with it, but after rewatching it, I'd say yeah, witch doctor had that. Yeah, as for what I as for what I thought of it, damage. This is. This is one, like, I gave all five points to Witch Doctor here. Like, Scorpios did, like, almost no damage to Witch Doctor here. Like, even though they did manage to land a few taps with their uh, non-functional spinner and stuff. But I think Witch Doctor did a lot more with that vertical spinner. As for aggression, this was kind of a coin toss here between giving all three aggression Mm -hmm. points to Scorpios or giving two out of three of them to Scorpios and stuff. I ended up settling on all three of them um, and stuff, because Scorpios was far more aggressive, even with a bad weapon and and stuff. Like, Witch Doctor was on the run for quite a few moments in that battle just to get away from that front, because Scorpios was still getting underneath them and pushing them around, flipped them a few times and stuff and gave witch doctor a lot of troubles witch doctor was trying to escape them multiple times and try to find a good angle to potentially hit a wheel and stuff which they did hit a connect on one of scorpios's wheels once and stuff as for that's actually one of my favorite sound bites from the fight where where zach lytle's like stop running away yeah that's my favorite part (laughs) yes it was and then there would be control where i went two to one in favor of Scorpios here with the shots that Witch Doctor landed being the reason why I gave them a control point is, yeah, it's kind of like what I said with the aggression category. Scorpios is constantly getting underneath Witch Doctor, continuing to charge at them with a, even with their weapon not functional and stuff. So, so yeah, I scored this as a six to five decision in favor of Witch Doctor. I think if Scorpios managed to land like one, shot like a shot with their spinner like actually functioning at full speed i would have actually given it to scorpios here or and such like that was just yeah. how close it was in my opinion and then stuff so yeah man i wanted i wanted scorpios to win this so bad just because i really want to see saw blaze and scorpios right oh yes but i would love I, to see I, that I, as well. I, 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 yeah, but I predicted which doctor was going to win, and they did win it. So, you know. I, and I don't want to predict which doctor versus Sawblaze again. I swear to God, it was so hard for me to predict which doctor versus Sawblaze last time. Oh yeah, it's going to be which they're and game they're game. and they're fighting again this yeah, <laughs> this Thursday. Exactly. Actually, well, this Friday for me since I have the season on Amazon Prime, I'm in such, but. But the, of course, though, the pro of getting it on Amazon Prime is I get to watch it whenever I want. And as well, I get to watch it ad free. Yeah. And as well, I get it forever yeah. for $20 rather than having to pay $5 per month for Discovery Plus. Listen, Discovery sucks. Plus has the Toy Hunter, though, and Toy Hunter is sick. I suppose that's true. But although it's, it's worth <laughs> it for some people, but then for someone like me, where the only show I'll be watching would be Battlebots or Bounty Hunters, it's not worth it to me. It's much better to just get it on Prime. Yeah. And but the... you can watch Man versus Food though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just shrug. So, so yeah, Witch Doctor will move on to the next round. The runner-up <laughs> is still in it. Their opponent is a their opponent is Sawblaze, a rematch from last season where it was a battle of the ground game, and I bet that's gonna be the same thing here as these two are probably gonna be battling for low ground, and whoever wins that battle is probably gonna win that battle. And so anything else from that this battle or No. No. So yeah, speaking of Witch Doctor and Sawblaze, 
our upcoming matchups once again, because what the heck? Why not share them? Share them yeah. out. Oh, so we talked about the the four matchups on the other side of the bracket that we will be seeing in this upcoming episode. We'll be seeing these four matchups as well, which were determined after this episode. That was we got the two seed Bloodsport, the eighteen seed Tantrum, seventeen sauce. Yes, Bloodsport Tantrum fights. Seven seed Sawblaze and twenty three seed Witch Doctor will fight. The thirty seed Mammoth, or should it have been the three seed Copperhead? It is who was like <laughs> it is Copperhead. I, I don't know why Mammoth's there. It's Copperhead. Hey, type yeah, dude. my bra- my bracket says Copperhead, so obviously there was some editing, like what Civilian Arc and Porinog have said. Yeah. yeah this I had Shatter it. being co- I had Shatter being Copperhead in my bracket, so which wow. is- wait what? Yeah. That's that's quite a that's quite a take, honestly. Yeah, I had Shatter beating Copperhead. Like Shatter Shatter has proven they wow. can take hits. And I think I they think can they can take hits, but like I think if they how? go right like, for the weapon, I think I think Shatter can disable Copperhead spinner with that hammer. Maybe. I guess I guess it's not super far fetched. Yeah, it's really no. nerds mad about it, but you know, <laughs> he's he's mad because Shatter because Shatter has to beat Mammoth mm. rather than beat Copperhead. Mm. Yeah, and then last matchup up, which would probably which is one of the toughest ones to call in my opinion. We got the six seed End Game mm-hmm. and the twenty two seed Rotator, or here, which should be another yeah. epic brawl, all and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so thoughts on these matchups from both of you. I'll go first because yeah, you go first. Okay, so first uh, blood versus blood sport versus tantrum. I think tantrum can pull it off. Yeah, I blood sports weapon hasn't really faced something that could take. I mean, it fought end game, yeah, but like it's started to show some weapon reliability problems. So, uh, and who knows if they'll play it safe or not? And Aaron Hill is a good driver, so I'm sure they could outdrive in. And if they flip Bloodsport, that's game over right there. Yeah. Sawblaze versus Tantrum's more of a tank. Yeah, Sorry. Sawblaze versus yeah. Witch Doctor. That, that I hate predicting this fight. It was so hard for me to predict it in 2019. I predicted Sawblaze in 2019. I'm actually gonna go Witch Doctor this year though, because. I was wrong about Sawblaze last year, so I'll try and be right about Witch Doctor this year. Mammoth versus Shatter, I think that's going to be the easiest one to call for me. I think that's an <laughs> easy win for Shatter. Yeah. Easy, easy quarterfinal run for Shatter. And he admitted that Mammoth advanced to the next round rather than Copperhead. Well, I that's, like, that's, like, no, that's, we gr- that's the great first step to realizing you just had a, had a raging problem. No, no, I, I no, dude. And civilian, civilian Dark suddenly like, wait, we're not talking about a fantasy league. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Aren't we talking about your like fa- your like fantasy fight card tournament? Aren't aren't we in to that phase of the? We're still in a break from that. Uh, wait till that comes out. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, Shatter will be the other bot that does not need to be mentioned whatsoever. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned it. Mentioned too. <laughs> oh man! You really um, think Shatter's gonna beat Copperhead? Wow. Yeah, I do think. Hey, I didn't say that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so oh. You... <laughs> oh God. Wow! You think your champion is gonna lose to Shatter? I'm stuck in a rock in a hard place here. Shatter's <laughs> sick though. Like I'm, I'm really happy that Shatter is finding success finally. They truly are the hammer bot. Yeah. yeah. Endgame versus Rotator, that's going to be probably another easy fight for me to call. I'd say Endgame, easy knockout. Endgame's going to kill one of the two Copperhead killers. What? What? Wait, what? Mammoth beat (laughs) Copperhead in our imagination. (laughs) Shatter beat Copperhead, too. What? I'm so confused. (laughs) Never mind. You guys clearly did not get that. Basically, I was saying that Mammoth KO beat Copperhead. Shatter kind of beat Copperhead. Well, Shatter in my bracket beat Copperhead. 
Endgame has to take on one of those two. If oh, it... okay. Huh, whatever. Yeah, I, I am it. really bad at explaining stuff, so whatever. So. I get it now. <laughs> All right, I'll do my predictions. Okay. Uh, first fight, I feel Tantrum's going to pull the upset. They're tanky, they're well-driven, they got a cool weapon, and Bloodsport, while they have had some good fights, they do have reliability issues, as seen in Kronos, the Kronos fight and the Gruff fight. So this should be this should be a bloodbath, though. No pun intended. Uh, Sawblaze versus Witch Doctor. Sawblaze has, has improved, I feel. I feel like Sawblaze has a better design for Witch Doctor this year with their the way that their scoop is. I feel like Sawblaze could wing it, and and plus they have a their hammer saw is pretty darn fierce. Um, so I'm going to go with saw blaze for that. Um, Shatter beats Copperhead. I think. Huh? Uh, that should be... Although I think they're going to have a hard time beating Mammoth because Mammoth is like a hard robot to approach. But I also kind of feel like Shatter is going to if Shatter, especially if they get a hit on like one of the wheels or on like the back part that has all the electronics, like they're probably gonna win that. And Endgame versus Rotator, it's probably gonna go to the judges, but it's probably gonna be Endgame by a hair, I think. Yeah, as for my opinion here for Bloodsport and Tantrum, um, I think one of three things is gonna happen here. Either Tantrum is gonna win it, win it, because Bloodsport has had problems with with their spinner overheating. We saw that happen against, wouldn't be Gruff Kronos? exactly. Yeah, we saw that happen against Kronos. That happened against Scorpios as well, all and such. And that yeah. could be something to watch in this battle because Tantrum has proven they could take hits from big spinners this season, mm-hmm. and and such and. I think Tantrum could very well take a bunch of shots from Bloodsport and manage to land a few good punches of their own and give Bloodsport a lot of trouble. The second thing being Bloodsport, or we underestimate like the spinner on Bloodsport, and Bloodsport manages to beat the crap out of Tantrum and do a giant amount of damage to them and such. Notice we haven't seen all of their blades in action yet. There could they could potentially have one that they might use specifically for this battle against Tantrum and such. Which could pull off a major mm-hmm. surprise. The third one, the best one out of three, civilian arc jinx it is at, and Tantrum breaks down, resulting in blood sport winning the whole thing or winning that battle. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, civilian arc jinxes it. They edit or civilian arc jinxes it. They edit it out, so that way Bloodsport wins it and such. It's probably one of the first two, but you never know. Oh, well. Battlebots hates me. Huh. Then as for the second battle, Sawblaze and Witch Doctor, a major rematch. I mentioned this already. That's going to be a battle of low ground, like how it was last season, and and such. No, I, was, I, I would give Sawblaze an advantage here just because I feel like Sawblaze has evolved a lot more between 2019 and 2020 than Witch yeah. Doctor has. And I think that get, that could give them a serious advantage in this one. No, as Kraken was, Kraken is very low, a very low to the ground by, including they were able to get underneath Witch Doctor and stuff. Sawblaze mm-hmm. is getting underneath Kraken and such when they fought Kraken in this last episode and such. So ground game could be a ground game. I feel like will be an advantage in Sawblaze's favor this time as last season. It was obviously in witch doctor's favor or, and yeah, I th- I'm predicting Sawblaze for this one, but I could very easily see witch doctor winning this battle. Is witch doctor is very much capable of winning this battle. Witch doctor is not really the lowest spot in the world either. That's it's, also yeah. a factor. It's not. It's more meant for like the weapon hitting, and then yeah, the, yeah. Because what? The, yeah, because I know what they tested out in 2018 was the weapon hitting the bot first before the other bot manages to get underneath them and stuff. Yeah. And so, actually, and so for the next one, Mammoth and Shatter, I think that one is like a lot more difficult to call than what a lot of people might expect in this one. Yeah. 
No, is the thing is, is Shatter, I feel like they might have a lot of trouble getting, like, an effective shot with that hammer because of Mammoth's design, which could be a real yeah. factor in this one. No, it's the one big area that I feel like Shatter could get an effective shot on, which is why I'm predicting Shatter for this one, is that control board in the back. The place where Hypershock hit that caused the battery fire and stuff. Yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking. That's kind of the big place I feel like Shatter will probably be aiming for or and such. Like, I bet they're probably going to come in with forks once again just to try to get underneath Mammoth, just to try to protect themselves from getting swallowed up by Mammoth, because Mammoth is not going to make it easy for Shire to get to that back area and stuff. Yeah. But still, oh, there's always, there's Mammoth's builders as well. They, a few of them mentioned, I believe today, hey, I, I believe it was in a post in the BattleBots group today, one of the team, one of their teammates mentioned that for this battle that one of the, one of the weapons they are like more afraid of is a hammer and such which could very yeah. much be possible because if shire lands a shot like in the right place kind of like huge as well where if they like landed a shot like an, like, like if they landed a good enough shot uh, they could completely break down mammoth even though i think shatter yeah. would have a very hard time with that it's very possible it could happen there's also another factor to consider um because Shatter and Mammoth fought at Orlando Maker Fair, and I'm pretty sure Shatter like did exactly what you said. I'm pretty sure they like slammed into that control board with the hammer and like just dis- disabled them pretty much. Yeah. Then as for the last matchup, Endgame and Rotator here. Now as Endgame, they posted a picture on Instagram, um, Hinting that they might have a that they might be coming in with a plow on their backside, similar to what Jackpot came with for this battle, but it's uncertain to me as it, it could very much be like a false rumor or something I mean... like that. But as for this one, like I could I could see I think Rotator definitely has the advantage and durability in this one between those two horizontal spinners and Endgame's vertical spinner. Even though Endgame definitely has the advantage weapon-wise to be able to like win a weapon-on-weapon exchange here, I think Rotator like yeah. would have the advantage in durability because Endgame showed in their Ballad Blood Sport that they could still break down relatively easily and such, and reliability problems could occur. Now, as there were concern, at least there were concerns to me after the perfect Phoenix battle, old that Endgame could have gyroscopic issues, similar to what we've seen like in past seasons that Rotator could take advantage of potentially. So as, as for my pick, I'm going to pick Rotator for this one. But this is probably Ooh. out of the eight match out of the eight matchups. This is probably one of my least confident picks out of the bunch here cuz yeah. This one really could go either way in my opinion. And I was mm-hmm. both uh, this will be an epic clash. And so mm-hmm. yeah, anything else on these upcoming matchups from you two? Um I have a question for you two. It's not about these four, four matchups, so it's about a matchup on the other side. Hmm. Okay. So do you think Hydra is actually going to show up with the stick with the stick for Gigabyte in the fight? I'm going to bet. Yeah, I'm going to bet yes for that. So, yeah, if you don't know what Pori is talking about, <laughs> Hydra has a attachment they're looking to come with. At, so, not quite like the cow catcher. It's, it's more closer to the de-icer that Ghost Raptor came in with for their battle with Ice Wave. Basically, the idea is that that thing would grab a hold of the self-writing mechanism area on Gigabytes and be able to keep that full body spinner away from them. Similar, like similar tactics to like the cow catcher, but more in like a de-icer form. I and think I, it's I made think I, from the cow catcher. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think I like the. I think the counter for Gigabyte is going to be like a m- lot more entertaining than what they used against Huge, in my opinion. 
I also think it's a lot less likely to work if they actually use it. Like, you know, for all we know, that he could like they could go at Gigabyte and just like knock off a self riding pole per se and Gigabyte and just roll in and like destroy it. But I I don't know I don't know if I believe that they're gonna actually do it. I feel like Jake you would be like the kind of guy to like troll about that. Like he probably like made that attachment like a week ago just to like mess with battlebot fans <laughs> very like, much yeah look i'm gonna do this but, yeah like I, but that's not like the case that might be the case if i'm being honest i don't it's hard to say but i i'm just wondering if he's I, actually gonna do it because if not it's hilarious i mean it's hilarious either way i guess because i don't think it's gonna work that well but it's just if he's if he didn't if he like actually didn't do it and he's just like welded that together in his shop one night like last week just to mess with fans like that's funny yeah personally i could see i could see jake you were doing it because supposedly sewer snake like back back when them and megabyte were a thing in one of their face-offs they came in with a similar configuration sewer snake came in with a similar configuration to what jake showed off off of what wayachi yeah. showed off there and even though Megabyte did win that battle, like they barely won it, the that that thing worked like how it was supposed to, and they as Sewer Snake denied that full body spinner for very much a lot of the battle, all and such. And Hydra, like Jake, is one where he's going to be wanting to avoid as much damage as possible, and Gigabyte is a bot where he could very well destroy destroy hydra's frame and very easily leave them in like bits and pieces and stuff so it would make sense for hydra to come in with that configuration for it but i'm not 100 percent sure about it yeah so yeah anything else or should we close out the video I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get my revenge on you too i swear to god <laughs> yeah. yeah okay uh, we'll see about that because I might have something planned for next week already. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. What? Are you just planning my torture out? Is is this what we're going for? <laughs> the civilian. The it's civilian called. Tur- it's called. Podcast. It's called turning the tables. <laughs> you can't pick a new champion. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Complicated, you know. It's- but yeah, Sorry. thank you for watching this video of us roasting civilian arc. I mean, explaining this episode and such. But no, it's yeah. become a new thing where we roast civilian arc just for fun because we know he doesn't <laughs> he, care. Or, he's honestly. gonna get back at. He, I mean, he's gonna get back at one of us. At least one of us. It's he's gonna, gonna get back. He's gonna get back at both of us. He's gonna get back at one of us harder. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, if both, one of us might win the nut, you know, like Black Dragon or Rivad isn't out, but, you know, one of us could win. If yeah. both of you lose, then I'm just going to have a, if both of you lose next episode, I'm just going to have a fun, this is going to be a fun podcast. He's going to pull out like, he's going to pull out like the notebook and it's just going to be full of like roast for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will hopefully see you in the next podcast. Like and subscribe. Black Dragon 2020 champion.